Hello and welcome back to True Peace in a Pod. We are so happy to be back with you again. I am Gail McNeil and alongside me I have Venerable Nick and Venerable Michael. If you missed our first episode, it was about meditation, so hop back and have a listen or a look at that. But today our episode is about transformation. So what was the feedback from our first episode? What was it like for you on your channel? Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, Very positive. Yeah, we had so much positive feedback. I think one of the most exciting things to see was that people are excited to start their practice again for meditation, taking tiny steps that can be so big and instrumental in their life to start changing it. Uh, people are hopeful again. People are sharing their stories and experiences from all around the world, different backgrounds to have a community like this for us is just we're so excited and uh, very happy to be part of it yeah and i was just so impressed by the diversity of the feedback because there were some people who i saw across both of our channels that some had never meditated before uh, especially your channel i i saw a lot of people yeah. were like wow i never knew meditation could be like this some people were like i was on the verge of tears i was almost crying and so like for people who are completely new to the practice to be to have such a positive experience and then some individuals who said that they'd been practicing for many years and for the first time feel like they really understood how to practice meditation i think that was beyond what we could have ever hoped for so um amazing feedback and for us more than anything it's just very fulfilling to hear that uh, what we're sharing has a lot of value for people and that they're able to connect with it. So I think on our end, um, we're just really happy with how it was received. Me too. I think the biggest thing for me was that I didn't really know how many people would connect with this idea of true peace in a pod because people are so busy being busy that they don't take time out to find a little bit of peace or a little bit of downtime. And I don't know whether you've checked the numbers, but we had over 35,000 people have watched or listened wow. since we posted uh, two weeks ago. Mm. And I don't know whether everyone knows this, but we're, we're just amateurs. We just had this idea of having this podcast of sharing light and helping other people find the light in the darkness. So to see 35,000 people and yesterday I just added it to another podcast channel. So we've got, we're on about five podcast channels and we're on YouTube. So thank you to everybody that's listened. And we're so happy to be back for episode two. And I'm really excited about today because Episode one was about meditation and I thought I knew what meditation was, but it turns out I didn't. <laughs> and it was only listening to you, uh, your voices. And also you'll be pleased to know, I haven't told you this, but I actually did your one day retreat. Oh, Ooh. wow. <laughs> you didn't know mean? this. Didn't know. It was really good. So for, <laughs> for us. So genuinely. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so for anyone that doesn't know, you have a channel, um, you have a page, which is, is it called The Lighthouse? What's uh, it called? Yeah, What's the light, name of it? Lighthouse Retreats. The Lighthouse Retreats. And I love that name because at first I thought it was a very nautical theme. And as my son's a captain, I thought, oh, this is great. It's in keeping with my nautical theme. But it's not about that, is it? It's about sharing the light. And it's a place to find light. Now, in the video one, in podcast one, you talked about the resources that were available. Well, I didn't need some of the resources, but there were resources there for people who wanted to do habit tra tracking. So definitely go and check those out. But when I did the one day retreat, I felt like I was with you. I felt like I wasn't alone. And I learned a lot about meditation. And the most important thing for me was to set to set myself up for success, to you spent so long telling me how to sit and how to prepare mentally that I, I couldn't fail. So I really enjoyed the one day retreat. So the resources will be under, the, you'll be able to find the resources in this podcast afterwards. So I would highly recommend everybody go and do the one day retreat. So going back to episode one with the meditation, 
I've completely changed the way that I meditate. Wow. So for before, I would take it very seriously and I would kind of force myself to find that inner peace. <laughs> well, of course, that's quite stressful, isn't it? Try to find right. your inner peace. <laughs> right. But when then Nick, you talked about thinking of it uh, as taking a shower, you take a shower to wash the dirt away from your physical body. When you meditate, take it's like taking a shower for your brain. And almost I want to change the word meditate to you said taking a vacation for your brain, but it's giving your brain some downtime. And that's how I think differently about meditation now. It's not about forcing myself to find a different part of my brain to go and access. It's just about stopping all of my thoughts. So thank you. Thank you for episode one. It completely changed the way that I think about meditation and how I practice meditation. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank thanks you. for sharing that feedback. And I think, uh, you know, that can be such an inspiring kind of view into your journey where you have been practicing meditation and like just to have that reframe and to use the resources and to uh, approach it with a different light. I think it's, it's nice to, for the people who are new to the practice or trying to deepen it is to, through your journey is to see like how little shifts can make a big difference. So um, yeah, thanks for sharing that. And we're glad that the lighthouse retreat was uh, helpful for you. Yeah, that was something. It was. It's an incredible resource. Yeah. And for us, we made it because a lot of people can't come to Thailand to meditate with us. So yeah. we figure we'll come to you. <laughs> and Lighthouse, uh, L-I-G-H-T, stands for Lighting Inner Goodness and Happiness Together. So for us, we wanted people to be able to utilize that time, utilize that space. All you have to do is press play. Get your friends together sit, meditate together and uh, purify the mind at the same time and like that inner goodness inside of you that it's already there. Yeah. And so no, I felt that. Yeah. Hopefully um, for those of you, I know there was actually one question and I was wondering where to put it into the, um, to the podcast because it's not exactly about transformation, but someone was asking about um, like, I don't know, like I don't have a center close to my house um, and I don't have a community and I'm not quite sure if I'm doing things right. And um, how do I know if I'm doing things right? And I think one thing that I would point that individual to that really came up for me, especially as you're sharing, is these lighthouse retreats. Is It's really about, it, it's for those people who don't have a community and who don't have a teacher mm -hmm. close by that they can access. Uh, is to, you can do this on your own or, or bring your friends and family uh, together for this retreat. And um, so that's one thing I would share with that individual. And then another thing too is uh, one thing that you just touched on that would be helpful for that person is the not taking the practice so seriously and a metric of, a good metric of like, am I going in the right direction is do I feel content with my practice? Yeah and not so much focusing on the outcome of needing some magical, mystical experience every time, uh, but rather is just t treating it like that shower every day. And as long as you're not more stressed afterwards, if you're more stressed after meditation, that's a good sign that we need to adjust something. <laughs> yeah. that's, your, that's definitely one indicator that we're not going the right direction. But if at the very least you feel some level of relaxation, maybe not as pronounced each time, but some level of relaxation. And we feel, we cultivate this contentment with, I feel proud of myself for showing up for this daily mind shower, then that's a good sign that you're going in the right direction. So I just wanted to address that question in this portion because it seemed to fit. Yeah. It's really important that people know that that resource is there because I I had quite a moment when I was watching you because I thought what an unselfish thing that was for you to create that retreat as a free resource because so many people charge for resources like this. And obviously you went to a lot of effort to film it and develop this idea. And so thank you for that. So if anyone hasn't seen that, I really, really would go and sign up for the one day retreat. I'm going to do the three day retreat before we speak again. <laughs> that is my, that's my goal because I found like a different person after the 
one day retreat because I'm someone, my brain is, my husband says, oh, your brain's on fire. You need to go and take a time out because my brain is literally on fire from the time I wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm someone that I actually do intermittent fasting because of the way that you eat. I actually change the way that I eat. So you would think that not eating for 18 hours that I would be tired first thing in the morning, but I'm on fire. <laughs> and the first thing I do now is I do my exercise. I take a cold shower and then I go for a walk and then I do my meditation. And that sets me up for, I would say the whole day, but after episode one, I now meditate three times a day, which I have never done before because I want to keep that inner peace feeling. I really want to, I really want to keep that because I'm someone, I'm not an overthinker, but I'm somebody whose head is literally bombarded with ideas all day, which is great because things like this materialize. And I love that. But I also know that I need to switch my brain off and let it cool down. Uh, something I learned this week, did you know that our brain uses 30% of the calories that we eat when we're really, really thinking? Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't know that as well. So giving my brain a time out in a, in a positive way, three times right. a day is transformational. And I'm sleeping so, so much better. Wow. I have to confess, I have had a couple of sneaky snoozes, though, <laughs> okay. when I've been too comfortable. <laughs> it's okay. And I, I'm curious. Um, that's amazing. Well done. I just want to applaud that three times a day meditation. What does that look like? So for the viewers at home, who maybe that sounds like an overwhelming um, thing to try to undertake. How does it, how does that work? How does that fit into your life? What does that look yeah, so like? You're, you're a busy yeah, you're person. Very, you're very, you're very, I am a very busy person, but does, I feel like work? this is essential. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's a great question. The thing is, I don't, uh, I know you said in, uh, you've said that it doesn't really matter how long you meditate for, as long as you meditate and as long as you do it every day and that two minutes, three minutes, five minutes is enough. So I thought, well, five minutes, three times a day. My skipping is five minutes, three times a day. Mm -hmm. And I tell everyone you can find 15 minutes for exercise. So I feel like I owe it to myself to give myself 15 minutes of downtime for my mind. So I will do the five minutes in the morning. And then after lunch, I, I finish eating at lunchtime. I take a moment then to just center myself and slow down and calm down. And that sets me up for the rest of the afternoon. And then in the evening, I'm someone that likes to, I work quite odd hours. So if it's a lovely day, I'll go out in the day and then I'll work in the evening. And one of the things, one of the problems with that is that my brain is overstimulated in the evening. Mm. So at the, I was on, I was on my computer at 1am this morning. So <laughs> that's what I'm like. But <laughs> what I do now is I will go and have a shower, a physically water shower. Oh, right. And then I will meditate for five minutes. So I will go back into my room and my office is kind of a multi-purpose room. So I'll go back into my office and I have a little corner and I just sit quietly for five minutes to just slow my breathing down, to check my body and just to visualize visualize a, a peaceful setting in my mind somewhere I'd like to be. And then I'm I'm already on my journey to sleep before I go to bed. So by the time I actually lay my head on the pillow, I'm asleep. Wow. So, and I, I know that women over 40 kind of have this huge issue with insomnia. And for any woman who is suffering with insomnia, I'd recommend exercise every day. But the meditation, it, it just changes everything because instead of getting into bed and thinking, oh, did I, did I pay that bill? Oh, did I get enough? Did I get dog food? You know, there's a million things going through your mind. Did I call that person back? Oh, there's a text message I missed that I'm actually just calming myself down and emptying my mind before I go to sleep. So three sets of five minutes has transformed my mood. I, I mean, I do get, I am somebody that's quite tolerant, quite patient, but I do lose my temper sometimes with okay. drivers and things like that. But I found after our last chat about driving that if I just take a moment when I'm driving, not to meditate because that would be dangerous, but to just calm myself down and slow my thoughts down, that it's transformed the way that I do everything now. So I kind of want everybody to understand that meditation isn't about going to this secret place in your mind. It is literally letting your brain cool down and have positive have a positive time out wow oh, congratulations i like that uh that terminology a positive timeout. it's not like yeah. you're disciplining yourself but you're giving yourself a gift 
Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, con- congratulations. For those at home, we didn't coordinate that. This is a surprise to us. We didn't know yes. that Gail was I didn't tell you. behind the scenes, <laughs> putting in the hours uh, three three times a day. That That's incredible. And to be able to, I'm, I'm sure you recognize the how that helps with consistency of maintaining that mood throughout the day of maintaining that stillness throughout the day of maintaining a more neutral state of mind throughout the day um so and clearly helping with your sleep as well which is something that so many people out there struggle with so yeah thanks for sharing that and really well done hey congratulations yeah. <laughs> Thank you. There's something I didn't do, uh, which I know the homework was to meditate every day. Now, there's a really good reason why I didn't. And I and I wanted to cover this in another episode, is that I lost a really close friend. And this kind of, it upset my balance. It made me start thinking about life and the meaning of life and losing my friend. And so my intention was to meditate every day, but I, mani- I missed three days. And Actually, going back to the practice after three days was what brought me some peace. Mm. So I think I was so busy overthinking everything that I missed out my daily practice. And it's called practice for a reason that you've got to practice to get it right. But I went back to it after three days and and that brought me some comfort as well. So if anybody's going through any kind of loss or a, a dark phase of their life, it, it is worth putting in those just five minutes every day to actually bring yourself back, center yourself and to find a little bit of peace and to stop overthinking everything. Yeah. And it's okay because life does happen. Uh, things come up. But I love in this phase is we're just experimenting and just continue to be very kind, be very gentle, neutral, and we'll just get back on track. Yeah. And yeah. sorry, sorry for your loss as well. That's um, I'm glad that uh, in that difficult time that you did have this practice to fall back on so that you can, despite the many difficulties of life, we can discover a uh, kind of a refuge inside of ourselves, where we can allow those things to dissipate a little bit, the heaviness to release and to uh, rebalance ourselves and uh, keep mm. moving forward. And that helps us to navigate those difficult times a bit more gracefully. So I'm, I'm glad that your your practice was helpful for you in a difficult time. It really, really was. And I think the thing is, we look for outside resources. I mean, I consider you an outside resource when I started learning about meditation. But one of the things I've realized is that you don't need anything else. You don't need stimulants. You don't need potions, pills and powders, I always say, because everything you need is within yourself. But you've got to learn how to use those skills, how to master those skills to actually give you what you're looking for, give you what you're seeking, whether that's light, whether that's peace, whether that's calm. And obviously you have the tools and that's why we're here is to share them with everyone else. So again, thank you so much. Before we uh, do the guided meditation, um, I think maybe we can uh, just share a little bit of a a concept about how to practice a bit more effectively. Uh, And that way we can understand a little bit more about the nature of meditation as well and what's actually happening as we uh, feel the benefits of the practice when we are actually sitting. So uh, one of the things that I kind of wanted to touch upon again that we had discussed uh, last episode uh, was this concept uh, or this uh, phrase that is shared by our meditation master, which is that stillness is the key to success in meditation. But as we had discussed is Stillness is not arrived at through force, but rather through setting up those proper conditions of both body and mind in order to allow that stillness to arise. In the same way that we set up the conditions for a plant to grow or a flower to bloom is we also can set up the conditions uh, of a comfortable body, comfortable mind, balanced with a light, gentle awareness. And this will allow all the dirt, the dust, the thoughts, emotions contained within our mind, within that glass of water, the dirt starts to settle and reveals a peaceful, clear, happier mind. So um, with that little recap of what we discussed last time, one thing that I want to highlight today that can be very helpful to expand our understanding of meditation and how to practice it effectively is zooming in to one part of that equation, which is the 
mental comfort, one of the things that really helps us to cultivate the mental comfort conducive for the mind to become still is to continuously reconnect with a neutral observation of whatever is happening in this moment. And this neutral observation is so fundamental and key to what we're building inside of meditation that this is how we've defined it. Uh, To put it in layman's terms, to demystify it is like getting down to the core is what is the purpose of meditation is to develop the skill of neutral observation in order to see ourselves, others, and the world around us as they truly are. So this definition uh, can really help us understand how sitting with our eyes closed every day translates to a better quality of life and allows us to see reality more clearly. And so before we talk about the transformation aspect of things, about how meditation supports transformation and positive change, let's take a look at how meditation helps us to build that skill and what that looks like and how we build it effectively. So there's a number of things that can happen during our meditation that causes our neutrality of mind to uh, come out of balance. And some of those things could be sounds or distractions that we hear in the outside world. Uh, It could be sensations inside of our body. It could be images arising within our mind's eye. And it could be our own wandering thoughts and emotions. So when these things pull our attention away from meditation is immediately the awareness of that balance, the light, gentle awareness, it comes out of balance. And oftentimes what also happens is our mental comfort comes out of balance as well. Because typically when people recognize that the mind has strayed to something, especially if it's a sound, like you can get very startled by it and it can jolt you out of that state of peace. Or when you notice that your mind has actually been wandering and you didn't even recognize it and then you notice, it can be frustrating. And we can feel that I'm not doing this correctly and we feel disappointed. And that comes with it a attention that is counter to the mental comfort that we're trying to create in this balance of comfort and awareness. So instead of just pulling the mind back with this tension present, which what this typically leads to is this game of frustrating tug of war as the mind strays and comes back and strays and comes back and we're progressively getting more frustrated. Uh, Instead of doing that, What we want to do first, before reconnecting with awareness, let's reestablish mental comfort. And so today we'll we'll discuss specifically some methods to reestablish mental comfort, releasing that tension. And the first thing that I want to do to share with you all is a little bit of a perspective shift that will help us reframe when the mind strays as something negative or indicating that we're doing something wrong into actually an opportunity that we can see as, oh, wow, this is an opportunity for me to build that skill of neutral observation. And so in order to bring this to life, I want to make an analogy. So the analogy that I'll share with you all is it's similar to when you are exercising, perhaps when you're doing a kettlebell workout. And for those of you who are interested, we actually have the kettlebell queen with us. (laughs) And if you want to look at one of her amazing routines, you can check out her YouTube uh, videos. And uh, we always have to sneak in a little bit of shameless self-promotion here and there. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But yes, so exercise is actually uh, similar in a fashion where what is necessary for us to exercise effectively? Well, during the session, we need to do multiple reps and we it's important for us to do it with proper technique, proper form. Otherwise, we might hurt ourselves. Otherwise, the strength and the uh, burning the fat and building the strength is not going to happen so effectively if we don't use the proper form. And in addition to that, we need to do it consistently over time. 
And so meditation is much the same way. And when, so when the mind strays is if we use the proper technique in the proper form, each time of pulling the mind back, it's almost like a bicep curl. If we're doing the proper technique, it's one mental rep of building this skill of neutral observation, of detaching from that tendency for us to not like and not want and get frustrated frustrated by imbalances, not just in our meditation, but in our life. So each time that the mind strays, instead of seeing it as a negative thing, this is an opportunity. So to, to build that skill of neutral observation. So that's one reframe that I wanna share with you all that can be helpful. The next thing I want to share is a bit more practical. What are the steps we can take to release that tension and come back to neutrality? So the first thing we can do is when the mind strays and we notice it, whether that's to a sound or to our thoughts, is initially with that noticing again comes that frustration. And it's almost like a mesh bag that's like surrounding our body and mind that just pulls tightly. And it can be a very palpable tension or just a very subtle one, but the tension is there. And so again, before pulling our awareness back, we want to release that first. And the first thing that we can do to do that is just a little exhale, very Mm -hmm. subtle and gentle. And you imagine that that little mesh bag was released. And so we release some of that tension that is accumulated. The second very practical thing that we can do is to open our eyes. And so some people hear this and it, they're a little reluctant to do it. Perhaps they've heard that you're not supposed to, or they just assume that you're not. But if we do it with the proper mentality, it can be almost like a bottle of soda that we've shaken up. And when you open the cap just a little bit to let out some of that carbonation, it's like a little tss, and it releases some of that pressure that has been built up. And so that internal frustration can be released when we open our eyes and we allow the tension that typically manifests in the eyes and the forehead to just dissipate a little bit. And then we can close our eyes again, bringing our mind back. And some people, if they don't want to open their eyes fully, you can open your eyes in a little bit more subtle of a way, just a slight opening. And last but not least, the most subtle way is to just bring in a little bit of motion to the eyelids, flutter them a little bit. And you can even roll the eyes up and back a little bit. And this just, again, alleviates some of that tension if you want to do it in a more subtle fashion. And last but not least, the last technique I'm going to give you is just allowing a very light, gentle smile to arise on your face. And again, like we're just relaxing on the side of the beach, uh, allow the smile to diffuse that seriousness that we can often bring into the practice and return to that state of like a mental vacation. So these are the three tools that I wanted to leave with you all is the light, gentle exhale, the opening of the eyes in whatever degree you like, and then also a light, gentle smile. And this can be done in just a couple of seconds. The mind strays, we notice, exhale, open our eyes, smile, and then we bring the mind back. And when we do this and we get in the habit of returning to mental comfort first before returning the mind back to the sound of my voice or the breath or whatever you want to use for your meditation object, this helps us to detach from negative responses to imbalances in our meditation and that will translate into our life as well. So this is what I wanted to share with you all today regarding a practical tip for how to meditate effectively. And with that, uh, we'll go ahead and do some meditation together. So um, you ready to meditate, Gail? I'm ready. I'm more than ready. (laughs) Wonderful. Okay. So as always, just like to invite you all to find a comfortable seated position for yourself. And take as much time as you need to adjust your body. Remembering that there's no need to rush into closing your eyes. If you would like to spend some time with your eyes open, 
allowing your thoughts to settle a bit more gradually. And this can be helpful, especially if the mind is extra busy or active. However, if you feel adequately ready and comfortable, you may softly and gently close your eyes. Closing your eyes in much the same way you would as if you were about to fall asleep. The way in which we close our eyes can set the tone for the rest of the meditation. So we make sure that if we feel any tension within the brow or the eyelids or any of the muscles surrounding the eyes, we take a moment to open the eyes once more, allowing that tension to fade away before closing the eyes again as softly and as gently as possible. Taking a moment. Simply release any remaining tension within your body. There are any subtle adjustments you would like to make to your sitting posture, then you may do so. Even something as subtle as a gentle lean of the head or the torso can go a long way to creating the proper comfort of body and mind that is conducive to allow all of our mental activity to slowly settle over time. And simply allowing a very gentle smile to arise on your face as you feel grateful for this opportunity to take a mental vacation and simply allowing your mind to rest, releasing all force and extra effort, enjoying this mental vacation, taking in a deep inhale drawing in positive and peaceful energy for exhaling with a slow and steady breath, letting go of all that no longer serves you. Breathing in deeply and fully, allowing the oxygen to energize your body and mind. And exhaling slowly and steadily, feeling lighter and lighter. Allowing steep breathing to allow you to feel more alert and more relaxed. You may simply allow your breathing to return to its normal and natural pace as we begin to relax every muscle in the body. Starting with the muscles in your forehead, allowing them to relax and loosen. Feeling as if your entire body is full of water and slowly that water began to drain away. Alongside all the tension within your physicality, allowing this relaxation to spread down to your eyebrows. down the sides of your temple, 
into all the muscles surrounding your eyes, your cheeks, your jaw, down to your lips, your tongue, and the bottom of your chin. Continuing to allow this relaxation to spread to the muscles in your throat and your neck, your shoulder, down the lengths of your arms, palms of your hand, into the tips of every finger. Feeling this relaxation spread the muscles in your chest and upper back, down the sides of your torso, your abdomen and lower back, your hips, your thighs, down the lengths of your calves and shin, to your feet and the tips of your toes. feeling as if all tension and heaviness was simply draining out of the bottom of your feet, sinking into the earth and disappearing, leaving behind a body that was light and spacious, hollow and weightless, completely free of all tension and heaviness of all worries and stresses. Feeling lighter and lighter, more and more relaxed. As if you were all alone in your favorite place in the world. Enjoying the most beautiful day. This warm sunlight radiates and fills your entire being with a sense of peace and serenity. And just allowing this calm, comfortable energy to wash over you. Resting your mind very gently in this comfortable feeling for a few more moments in silence until we come to the appropriate stopping point. Take a deep breath, allowing that peaceful and positive energy to radiate throughout every cell in your body. As you smile very gently, making the intention to bring, the, bring this grounded and peaceful energy with you into the rest of your day. And whenever you feel ready, you may softly and gently open your eyes as we have come to the end of our meditation. That was good. How was that, Gil? It was so good. <laughs> 
feel like we should start with meditation because I'm really excited when we start the podcast and I'm so full of energy. And then I feel if we started with the meditation, I would, I'd just be so blissed out for the whole episode. <laughs> maybe episode three, we can shift things around and put it right at the beginning. Maybe, maybe. No, it was amazing. Amazing. I just, it's just nice to have a rest from thinking and it's nice to uh, and uh, it's just nice to listen to your voice. And one thing I would definitely tell people is to wear headphones mm -hmm. because it's so different with headphones on. Mm -hmm. Listening to your voice, uh, both of your voices with headphones on is quite magical because you've got lovely voices and they're very calm. And when you're talking about working from the top of your head all the way down to your toes, and I think I'm relaxed. But then when you say relax your tongue or relax your eyebrows, I'm, oh, no. No, I wasn't relaxed. I really wasn't relaxed. <laughs> there was still some tension. And even my chin and things like that. And, and and I think we think, oh, yeah, we're relaxed, but we're not. So, no, definitely wear headphones. And maybe we should start and finish with a meditation. I don't know. We'd never get any work done. <laughs> Just yeah. meditating the whole time. Well, yeah, I well. know. Yeah, that's great that you had a good experience. And I hope for all the listeners out there that it gave you a sense of peace, just a little touch of peace throughout your day. Uh, for me, I want to uh, share an analogy that may be helpful because sometimes meditation can be quite complicated, but we just want to make it as simple as possible. And you mentioned it earlier uh, in the beginning, where the yeah. easiest way to understand meditation, I feel like it's the analogy of taking a shower. And for everyone who's listening and for Gail too, it's how many of you shower every single day, right? Every single yeah, day. That's me. <laughs> yes. Have you ever gone through uh, a day where you were so busy and you just did not shower? That's never happened to me because okay. I'm one of these people that has such a good bedtime routine that <laughs> I I know that I need to switch off technology an hour before I go to bed. And I know that I have to clean my teeth and have a shower. <laughs> and if I if I think... Oh, maybe I won't have a shower. I, I can't do it. I literally can't do it because my brain says, no, no, no. We can't sleep until you've had a shower. But there have been times where, like if I was hiking with my son and we've gone to Albania and there is no shower, right. there is no shower. And I and I feel unclean and I'm, you know, you've been sweating in the day or you know, there's been dust and dirt. And that, so that I wouldn't intentionally not take a shower, but there have been times when I couldn't take a shower such as hiking where my son takes me on these wild adventures and it's horrible I can feel the dirt <laughs> of the day I can yeah. feel the grittiness on my face my skin so yeah I, I don't intentionally go without a shower but I know what it's like to not have a shower right. it's not nice yeah so for those rare occasions when life happens we can't shower we don't have access to it we'll get over it we'll do our best the next day we'll get back to showering again Okay. What happens if you don't shower two days in a row? Oh, you can. Yeah. Look at your face. Ew. You can feel it <laughs> in your body. You can feel the dirtiness. You can just feel the ickiness of mm -hmm. not showering. What happens if we don't shower three days in a row? We don't have any friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your neighbors, <laughs> your friends will start to feel it. You know, you'll have the, this odor, you'll have this stench, this um, dirtiness that people can feel. So for us, how did we get to this point where we don't shower? You can feel it. And for us is because we developed the habits from a very young age, our parents, our caregiver understood that the physical body naturally gets dirty. And for me as a young boy, I hated taking a shower because the water was a bit too cold. And also uh, I wanted to play video games. And I didn't want it to distract my time. And I would tell my parents of today, I don't want to, I don't want to shower because I didn't do anything today. But as with my parents, no, that's not going to fly. Get in the shower and you're going to take that shower. And from doing this over and over and over again, for us now as adults, we develop this habit simply because we know the physical body naturally gets dirty and we need to take a shower. But where people are uh, missing the point or not knowing is that the mind also gets dirty. Like we yeah. talked about, if you're using your five senses and you're engaged in the world, the things that you see, the things that you smell, taste, touch, hear, 
every time that happens, now the mind gets dirty. And imagine people never shower the mind, never clean the mind. And some people go a decade without cleaning the mind, two decades, three decades without cleaning the mind. And imagine with your lens being clouded, how that can impact your world, how that can create suffering and hardship for yourself. But for us, the takeaway is then when the mind gets dirty, how do we clean it? It's with meditation. It's what we did. And meditation is simply setting the conditions properly, relax the body, relax the mind, and then don't fall asleep. Have a light and gentle awareness and the mind will clean itself. So for us, the takeaway from this is every single day, no matter if you're busy, no matter if it's a good day, it's a bad day, it's a stressful day, like how you develop the skill of taking a shower, every single day shower the physical body and then shower the mind as well. Just a few minutes can help you to clean clear and purify this mind, but just very uh, easy to understand and grasp. And people will ask me of, Venerable Nick, I'm not good at meditation. I don't know how to meditate. No, it's not. You don't know how to meditate. You just haven't developed the habit. That's it. From our travels all around the world, we've never had adults come up to us and say, I'm struggling with showering. (laughs) (laughs) It's so stressful. I don't know how to shower every day. No, that doesn't happen. But it's simply a habit. And you know how to do that, but we just haven't been trained. But hopefully with this community, with this podcast, let's start fresh. Every single day, just one minute, two minutes, five minutes to clean the mind. So very easy analogy, right? Yeah. Can I ask you how old each of you were when you discovered meditation? Because I didn't grow up with any form of meditation. So how old were both of you when you discovered meditation? Uh, for me, uh, I I discovered it around, I guess yoga was kind of my first introduction to meditation. Like the first time I did yoga, if anyone knows, funny, the P90X like workout routine is like these online um or these videotapes and uh to to do exercise and then one of them was yoga and it really intense the hardest one on there and at the end uh i laid down for what they call shavasana like the the corpse pose and just like had a deep meditative experience so that was like my first initial exposure to it Uh, but I didn't start practicing daily until, or like going to a meditation center until I was about 20, 22. Yeah. And and for me, it was a a bit older as well. Uh, My parents would take me to a meditation center, but I didn't like it. And I, I would just do it just because I had to, but I think where it really stuck was when I was suffering and, and I was grasping for things outside and that couldn't fix. And what you talked about in the beginning, I had to access uh, inner wisdom and I had to uh, clear my mind and in that suffering and seeing the benefits of it giving me that space. I was tired, I was exhausted, I was depleted. And to see the tangible benefit of it, I was like, okay, there's something to this and I wanna explore more. Yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's only when we get to a really dark place and we find ourselves in the darkness and we're kind of desperate for just a little bit of light to enter that we're just clawing around trying to find something that will bring us a little bit of happiness or something to calm us down. And I I know that when you're younger, there's so many more exciting things to do than meditate, that, you know, there's music, there's dance, there's so many things. But I think if there was one skill that I'd learned when I was younger, it would be meditation. And it's something that I'd like my son to embrace. My son is 30 and he's a really happy guy. 
who doesn't seem to have any stresses. I'm sure he does. Like he, he's got control of them. And I keep saying to him, oh, you should really watch, you know, my podcast. You should really have a look at meditation. He's like, oh, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And so even I'm his mother. He's I'm not saying he's not interested. He's like, no, I, I kind of don't need it. And you don't know you need it until you need it. Yes. And I think that everybody should have this skill, even if you don't use it, if you don't practice it, just know that it's there. Because I think a lot of young people turn to pharmaceuticals to numb their mind and obviously that's that's not the right solution when actually we got all of this power in our mind to change to shift and and, you know I can't even convince my son so I can't convince everyone else (laughs) but I think that um it's I like the fact that you're sharing this awareness of these skills that we do have we just need to learn how to use them and how to gain these skills and then how to practice them but one of the things that um I realized in my own moment of darkness is you've got to have an awareness of what, what you don't know. You've got to have an awareness that you need something else. And that's kind of how you transform, isn't it? It's first of all, becoming aware that something needs to change. Yeah. But I don't know whether you'd finished your, I don't, I didn't want to kind of start on the next phase of uh, this podcast without you finishing your analogy, because I know that you had a little bit more to say about that. Uh, yeah, I think that gives a good overview on it. And I know for this um, podcast or for this episode, uh, we're focusing on transformation. And for me, I wanted to give a simple overview and a model because people are here for change. People are here because they want something different in their lives for a big change or a small change or a transformation. And I wanted to just give you a simple model that can be very helpful. And of course, that means props. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I want to... Oh, for share. anyone that can't see, sorry, Ben, Nick, oh. for anyone that can't see, you're holding a... Uh, it looks like a jar and it looks like it's got salt in it. Yes, correct. Yeah. And for me, um, at the darkest period of my life, it was during a breakup. I had everything, life was great. And all of a sudden, the relationship of five years went sour. It destroyed me, Gail. It was the mm-hmm. hardest, darkest period of my life. And I didn't know what to do. And at that time for me, is I was a therapist. I had access to a lot of the, uh, therapist friends, to books, to resources. But I still couldn't fix my life and I didn't know what to do. And I tried to access so many things to change and it helped, but it wasn't working fully. And I was so desperate to the point where I went to my mom. And this for me was a big deal because I come from a conservative Asian family. We don't talk about our feelings. We're not talking about romantic relationships. So the fact that I went to my mom, (laughs) that shows the sheer desperation. And I said, mom, like, this is what happened. And I went through a breakup, my sense of identity, the sense of myself, everything just fell apart. I'm I'm so depleted and I want to fix my life. I don't know what to do. I'm open to anything. Can you please share some wisdom that can be helpful for me? I want to change my life and I need to get out of this space. And she was so sweet. And she looked at me and she said, no worries. And thank you for sharing with me. But the analogy she said she wanted to share with me, it's this is your life. You're, it's like uh, the all the things that are happening, all the bad things that are happening in your life is like salt in this cup. It already happened through your thoughts, your speech, your behaviors, all of those things that happen. Now you're feeling the negative effects of it. We can't change it. You can't get rid of this salt. So as of this moment, we just got to adjust and adapt to it. And the first thing she said is in your life, you have a lot of salt. The first step is stop adding more salt. From this moment forward, you don't need a story. You don't need uh, anything. But from this moment forward, things that are no longer serving you, things that are not healthy for your life, habits that are not good, thought, speech, and action, from this moment forward, stop doing those things. Do your best to limit those things. Don't add more salt. The next thing that you, you need to do is if you can't get rid of the salt, then add more water. 
And water means do more of the good things. Do more good speech, good thoughts, and good action. And keep filling it up. Every time you you do the new behavior, any time you do the new action and the new thoughts, then it's like you're adding drops of water into this salt. And just keep adding and keep adding. And do this. A day will turn into a week. A week will turn into a month. A month turns into a year. But now this cup that I'm holding with salt, it's full with water. Is the salt still there? Yes, of course it's still there. But the difference, it's it's diluted. Now it's not as salty. Yeah. And when this cup is full, what, what, what do we do next? Well, pour it into a bigger container. So I'm holding a big container. We need some you, cooperation yeah. here. This, so is this, a two this, per- this is a two-person <laughs> analogy. You pour this cup into a big container. I just spilled everywhere. <laughs> For anyone that can't see, we've got a, a container, which the smaller yes. container has been poured into, and now there is more water being added in a jug to that. So we're yes. diluting the salt yes. into so a bigger container. Yes, so keep adding more water into this bucket. Get it all the way to the top. When it's full, take this bucket and pour it into a, a bathtub and keep adding, adding more water. When the bathtub is full, take it into a swimming pool, keep adding more water. We don't have is, a swimming pool with yeah. us though, unfortunately. <laughs> There's not one under the desk. There's not one under the desk, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> is, is then the salt still there? And the answer mm. is yes, but now it's diluted and the heaviness in your life, you won't feel as much. So for us is the first step is to stop doing bad, Second step is to do more good, keep adding more water. And then the third step is purify your mind. What we just did with meditation and why this purification and meditation is so important for those wanting to change your life is you need wisdom. You need to be able Mm -hmm. to see your situation clearly. When you can see clearly, now you'll know what to do next and keep taking new action and do this over and over and over again. And it's a spiral. And this is how you begin the stage of changing. Again, stop doing bad, do good, uh, keep adding the new action. And then three is keep meditating and purifying your mind. So with this easy and simple model, Gail, maybe you can share as you started your transformation progress, how does this relate or resonate with you? Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to share my story. I mean, I've got questions from what you just said is that I know that a lot of people get stuck. Mm. There's something bad will happen to them, or maybe they did something bad, or they just found themselves in a bad situation. And then they live the rest of their life in that moment. So they can't let go of what happened. So if they found themselves in the darkness, they will remember that forever, that they've been in the darkness and they will stay in the darkness. And you know, I've had bad things happen to me. I mean, I was in an accident once and I was on fire. My face was on fire. My hair was on fire. I was really badly burnt. You probably wouldn't know that, but I was really badly burnt. And I got over that by putting that in the past, but some people can't do that. They are, they are stuck in that moment. And I think it's because they, it becomes their identity And their identity is they're depressed or their identity is that they've had this accident or their identity is that they've lost someone. And it's the having the ability to move forward. And that's what you're explaining, isn't it? It's that has happened to you. But if you just keep adding good things, pleasant things, happy thoughts, that eventually that bad, that salt then becomes diluted. But I think for me, with my own transformation, I'm not talking about the burn now, I'm talking about when I got myself into a dark place. And that was through, I'll share this quite openly, that was through uh, being in lockdown. I was someone that used to walk a lot. I was an outdoor person. And then suddenly I found myself in lockdown and I didn't have access to the countryside. I didn't have access to walking. And walking had been my meditation because I didn't have meditation as a tool. So the walking was my meditation. It was my timeouts. It was the it was three or four hours a day of really heavy going on hills. And so then I found myself in lockdown and then I'm looking for something else. And so the sunset was something really, really nice that I enjoyed. And then the sunset gets accompanied by one gin and tonic, and then it gets accompanied by two gin and tonics. And then gradually my weight increased and my mood darkened. 
And my mood darkened to, well, there was just lights out. I I literally didn't want to be here. And if someone had said, "Here's here's a magic tablet, take this and it'll all be over, I would have happily accepted that tablet and I would happily have popped off. <laughs> and I'm really glad I didn't. But that's that's where I was at the time. And that's where I discovered your channel, Ven Nick, which was uh you were you were a moment of calm for me that enabled me to get a little bit of order in my chaos. So the first thing that anybody needs to do if they're in a dark place or they're kind of lost is to have that awareness that you need to change. You need to change. You can't stay where you are I mean, the the darkness is a, is a place to explore, but it's not a place to linger. Some amazing things came out of that dark period, that dark time for me. I wrote a book and things like that, but I don't want to ever go back there. So I think it's having the awareness and being conscious of where you're at, and just knowing that you you need to change. And I think when you get to my age, you are made up of all the things you've seen, you've heard, the places you've been, and you it's very difficult to, to, to change because that's who, that's who you are. Like you say, you, you parents took you to meditation and you didn't want to do it. That for me, that would have never been in my parents thought process to talk about meditation or anything like that. So I didn't have those experiences. So for me to change, I knew I had to learn new skills. I had to learn something new because what I knew already wasn't helping me. So that's where I found your channel. So it was having, having that moment of, awareness of this is not good. If I carry on like this, nothing's going to get better. I need to change. So then I had to accept that I was in the darkness and accept that I needed help, but it was up to me to find that help. And that's where I found your channel. And that's where I did get help. And so the next thing I needed to do was have, take action. So then I had to say, well, okay, I'm in the darkness. I know I'm in the darkness. I know I need to change. What can I do? So this is where I started implementing these habits. My first habit actually was watching your videos (laughs) nonstop. But um, honestly, if anybody hasn't seen your channel, you need to go and watch then Nick's channel and also go and do the uh, retreat as well. But let's go back to the, the YouTube channel because I knew that I needed to change. I didn't know how to change and I didn't have that wisdom. So then I had to take action and the action was watching your videos, but then it was actually implementing things that you were talking about. It was, it's very easy to listen, but then it's quite difficult to make changes. And I realized that my eating and drinking was out of control. So my drinking was out of control. I mean, some people might say, well, two gin and tonics a day, that's not actually a lot but they were two double gin and tonics. So it's actually four gin and tonics. Mm. And that's way too much. I mean, alcohol is poison. It is poison. If you look on all of the websites, uh, medical websites, you'll see that it is a toxin. It is poison, but it does make you feel good for that moment. But when you're drinking, you will feel relief for one hour, two hours, Mm. but then it wears off. And then what do you do? Do you drink more alcohol? Or do you realize that, oh, this is just a temporary fix. This is just a Band-Aid, but it's not actually making me feel better. It's actually making me feel worse because I'm, it's a toxin. So of course it's having an effect on my body. I was gaining weight and the more weight I gained, my, my mood obviously was sliding down as well, but also I was becoming not immobile, but I was, I was losing my mobility and my functionality as a human. So it was setting that action to change something and, for you, for me, when you talked about the way that you, as a monk, you eat, uh, it's not that I wanted to become a monk. It's not that I wanted to go and find food every day and for somebody to donate it to me in that way. But it was okay. I need to set some limits on my eating, my drinking. I need to take control of it. So the action I took was okay. I'm going to only eat twice a day. Then Nick only eats twice a day, so I'm going to eat twice a day. But I've got the luxury of choosing what I eat. So then I set myself a goal of well, I'm going to give myself a month to transform to eating twice a day, and I'm going to stop drinking. And you'd think if you're in a dark place, well, you know, drinking is actually good. It numbs you for a little while. It does numb you for a little while. It would numb me from the evening to maybe one o'clock in the morning. And then one o'clock in the morning, I was wide awake and all of those feelings and noises in my head came back even louder. So I realized that was not fixing anything. So then I took action of uh, changing what I ate. And then I started exercising and changing everything about my life. So I know you've talked about it in the past, Ben Nick, when you talk about times of transition. Mm. And I feel that was 
when we go into times of transition, we're not prepared for them. Sometimes it can be something like your children leaving home. Obviously, transitioning for me was this lockdown feeling of, oh, my, you know, the world is my oyster. I can do what I like to. Obviously, then everything was taken away from me. So my transition was learning to cope temporarily with this restriction in travel, this restriction in being outdoors. So I had to transform to cope with this transition and I didn't know how to. So step by step, by changing what I ate, I stopped drinking. Then I started moving I was able to transform everything about my life. And that sent me on a road of discovery, learning about blue zone diets, learning about dodstadning, which is Swedish death cluttering. Uh, but there's just so many things. My mind was like uh, suddenly opened up to so much potential and possibility. But you set me on that path and I had to trust in the process, which is uh, every day, make little changes every day. Not mass. I think the thing is people get overwhelmed. Like even with they look at my transformation from my body as it was in 2021, And I was carrying 32 pounds of excess weight Mm. and people say, oh, but you look good. Uh, Okay. Well, I might've looked good carrying 32 pounds of excess weight, but I didn't feel good. I didn't feel good. If I'd felt good, it wouldn't have been a problem. So little by little, I made changes and people say, oh, but I couldn't do that. No. Okay. Well, you couldn't suddenly pick up a jump rope today and do 3000 jumps. It would be impossible and you will be able to move tomorrow. <laughs> but if you jumped five jumps the first day and then 10 jumps the second day and then 20 jumps the third day, you would see your body transform over six weeks. And that's also true with meditation. If you say, I don't have time for meditation, but you said, okay, well, I'll give myself one minute. I'll give myself one minute to meditate and you did that every day, you'd feel so good after that one minute, you'd make it two minutes. And it's the same with changing your diet. It's the same with exercise. It's just step by step. It's making these small goals because they add up. It's like a mountain, isn't it? You don't climb a mountain in one leap. You have to take all these little steps to reach these mountains. I was recently in Albania with my son and we walked walked 30 kilometers. I think that's probably a little bit less than 25 miles a day. And I remember looking at this mountain and thinking, oh my God, it's huge. It's, oh, I'm at the bottom of the mountain. How am I going to do this? And then I just enjoyed the journey. I just enjoyed every single step. And I think that's about transformation, isn't it? It's the same with transformation is don't look at the mountain. Don't look at the 30 pounds you want to lose. Don't look at your body that's turned to mush that you'd like to have a little bit more muscle. Don't look at your mind that's a mess. Just think of, well, every day, if I made one little change, one positive change, what would I feel like in six months time? And one of the things I see on my channel is that people have said, well, I've shown them a way to actually change without a drastic change. You don't have to suddenly start running a marathon every day. I would say start off with one minute exercise a day. Start off with adding more vegetables to your plate. Start off with eating three meals a day. Make it two and a half meals a day. Make it two meals a day. And this is the thing about transformation. It is taking those steps, but it doesn't matter how small they are. It's that you just move forward. And this is why I say about people stuck from a trauma in their life. They're not moving away from that trauma. You need to, you need to start moving. You've got to believe in yourself and it's step by step. So that's kind of my story of transformation. It was realizing I was in the darkness, realizing I had to do something and realizing I had to change. And that's how I changed. So then Nick, when you were in your moment of darkness and your mother obviously said a about the salt, how, what changes did you make? What did you add to your life to dilute the salt? Was there something that you did? Uh, yeah, for me is I had to go through the process of stopping everything that was no longer serving me, uh, doing a lot of activities just to keep myself busy. Uh, the friends that I was hanging out with, I would engage in drinking. I would engage in a lot of shopping. I would engage in unhealthy activities in the evening time. But those were the things because that, that I had to put a stop on so it can start to make space. Then mm-hmm. when there is a little bit of space, then I can start to add the new things in. But my life for me was just filled with distractions. It looked like I was going somewhere. I was so busy. I was so, no, you're running in circles. Yeah. I think the stories that I carried, the place that I was in, the 
uh, habits that I was displaying and the, the activities that I was involved in, it comes to a point kind of like what you said is at this point, I can justify it as much as I want to. But at the end of the day, I know it no longer serves me. It does not help me. So from that, I need to do something different. And that's how the, the process begins. And what about you, Ven Michael? Because I know in episode one, you shared your story. So what, what positive things did you add into your life to dilute the salt? Yeah, um, I think similar to Venerable Nick is it was a lot of cutting out first uh, because my, my life was full of so many unhealthy things that there was no space or energy to implement something positive initially. Uh, I just needed to cut out the things that were no longer serving me. And very similar to Venerable Nix was, it was a lot of going to the bar and and hanging out with people who had these uh, self-destructive tendencies and liked the nightlife. And so for me is, I was also in a situation where like I had to go back to school and take a full course load and work a job. So I, I really didn't have much time to do those things. That was a great chess move by my dad. Like <laughs> very, he kept very, you busy. He kept me busy with, <laughs> with like responsibilities. So uh, it was actually exactly what I needed um, mm. because I also knew that these were not the good things that I chose for myself. Um, so I needed to find clarity of like, what is a plan B for me? And so meditation is what helped me release that feeling of being trapped, uh, in a life that didn't align with me and, uh, slowly discover that there is another option for me. And by the time I made the goal, like I had this very lofty goal of becoming a monk is, that was the fuel and the fire that I needed to shift everything because I saw a vision of who I could be. And I think that was so important for me because I didn't have any hope for being uh, someone who lived a meaningful, fulfilling, happy life at my darkest. I didn't display any of those qualities. I had no evidence that I was capable based on my past of achieving anything. <laughs> and so for me is when, once I had that goal and I made that decision, I, and this wasn't anything, no one was telling me to go become a monk. Like I made that decision for me and I knew like, this is me fighting for me. Uh, and once I did that, I feel like for the first time in my life, I really unleashed my full potential because I had a valued goal that was good for me. It wasn't about how it's going to make me look. It was none of that, but it was, I need to fight for my life. And once the goal was set and I knew precisely what I was moving towards this, the highest vision I could, highest good I could think of for myself. And I knew precisely what I was moving away from this life that was uh, prescripted by someone else that I know doesn't serve me. Uh, it was like maximally motivating. And uh, for me, the the positive things I did, I became very financially um, stringent and I would, I budgeted and I set financial goals for, okay, how much am I uh, making each week? How much do I want to save? So this is how much I can spend. And I put that up in my mirror and I just... Like I became very financially responsible. And if you're financially responsible, you're not going to be going out and, do, and spending money on nightlife. Right. That's for sure. So uh, for me, those were some of the main habits, the financial responsibility, the meditation and um, setting positive goals. And um, I would, I exercise a lot as well. I would go to the gym and play basketball. So that's how I filled my time with, with healthy things. Oh, that's amazing. Well, that actually fits in nicely with our question actually from Belle. And she says, what would be the first step to move towards the change you are looking for? What would be the first step? Yeah. Um, for those trying to change or the, the just the change process in itself, I find that it comes in two steps. The first step is to see the issue clearly 
And then from seeing clearly, you'll know what to do next. Now go and solve it and go and take that action. A lot of times people who are wanting to make this shift, they go directly to step two. Yeah. And, and you don't even know what the issue is. You don't even know the full uh, extent yet. So I would say for those who are wanting to change, the analogy is like, take, uh, imagine you're a car. The car has some issues with it. Take it into the shop. Take it into the mechanic. And the first step is we need to diagnose. Diagnose what, what's coming up for you. And we already now develop the skill of neutral observation. My friends, no stories, <laughs> no judgment. You haven't been working out. It's okay. No problem. You're lazy. No problem. No problem. We're just diagnosing. Take out a journal and write down what are some of the things that no longer serve me and go through different dimensions of your life, your finances, your physical health, your emotional health, your social health, your spiritual health, and start to diagnose yourself and things that you can fix. And then the second step is once you can see it clearly, take some time. Then once you can see clearly, I find that you'll know what to do next. Then start to come up with a game plan and take action. And I think your analogy demonstrated very well. You took the time to see this is not working. This drinking thing, <laughs> this health thing, this is not working. Okay, see very clearly, neutrally, don't beat yourself up. Now from that, let's come up with a game plan. I'm jump roping five, five today yeah. and keep yeah. going and keep going. But I find that that's a, a very good way to start that change process. Yeah, and and I I would echo that is really is the assessment is is the first thing we we have to see things clearly. Otherwise, we can be trying really hard and putting in a lot of effort, but we're going in the wrong direction, and we're not even addressing the root cause of the issue. And so, like that's why uh, for me, like what was why I wanted to focus on that neutral observation of in meditation today. And that's how we define it is neutral observation is what helps us see reality clearly. And what Venerable Nick said is so key is when we start assessing, uh, if we haven't built the skill of neutral observation, we're going to add a story. We're going to add a value judgment because of my childhood trauma uh, I do X, Y, and Z, and I can never change because of what happened to me in the past. And we attach to a story and we can never move forward because we're adding a uh, judgment. We're adding a uh, belief that some people call limiting beliefs. That yeah, I was going to say, it's like a limitation, yeah. Right, and and we we place those things on ourselves. So the way to release limiting beliefs is to cultivate the skill of neutral observation. And inside of meditation, again, when we have something that is unpleasant that arises, when it's the the sound from the outside world, when it's the uh, ache in our body, when our mind has wandered, is our initial knee-jerk reaction is to be upset with ourselves, to beat ourselves up about it. I'm not doing this right. I don't get it. I'm not good at meditation. And in that moment, we are practicing. That's why we call meditation a practice because we are practicing detaching from that reaction, that negative judgment upon this situation and returning to just facts. The mind wandered. Okay, great. Release. And in the same way, when we assess our life, I did this habit that's not good. I did this thing that hurt someone else. I betrayed myself in this way. And we can get locked in the stories of why those things were either justified or why we're such a bad person for doing these things, but those stories don't help us change. And so when we go through the assessment phase of just seeing where we are in this moment, what is unhealthy and no longer serves us, is we release the emotional attachment to the story that surrounds what gave rise to our current situation. And when we free ourselves from that emotional baggage, it gives us the opportunity to, one is see it more clearly, is, is to see the, the nature of the, this is not an intrinsic quality of me. It's just because of many different factors that happened. And I don't need to choose to be that way moving forward. And here's a new action that I can replace that 
unhealthy habit with. But all of the actions of releasing what is unhealthy and cultivating what is healthy must first be preceded by a neutral observation so that we can assess the situation very clearly. Mm -hmm. And this is how meditation helps us with transformation. Yeah, because I know that when Nick, I, I always like you you say like, let it go. It doesn't matter. You know, that was before. And I think people can't let go that they are kind of stuck in that. I can't do this. I can't do that. But by saying I can't do it, they're actually manifesting that reality of they're never going to do it. But if we say, well, that was yesterday, today is another day and I'm capable of so much more today. What can I do today? I think that's really, really important is that letting go okay, I ate too much yesterday. I drank too much yesterday. I sat and had a whole bag of chips and watched TV all day, but that was yesterday. It doesn't matter. Today, I'm going to move for one minute. I'm going to meditate for one minute. I'm going to, you know, do something. I'm going to eat vegetables for one minute. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it's something positive. So, well, you've actually got a lot of questions. I don't know if we're going to be able to get through them all. Um, but <laughs> so we've got, um, uh, this is don't have a name for this one. I've been through my own personal transformation and I'm the happiest I've ever been, but there is something inside me that believes I'm meant to do more. What's my purpose now that I have raised my family, am happily divorced and have finished grad school? Um, yeah. So I think that, uh, for this situation is it's kind of a, a question of like finding purpose after you've done a, checked off a lot of the boxes. And I think in those types of moments, what's really important is just to take time of getting to know yourself. And the way that we can do that is just by like trying new things. And when we're trying new things. Sometimes we can get into a habit of judging ourselves based on how well did we do the thing. Uh, but if we use these new actions with a different frame of mind of this action is to get to know myself better, then what we can focus on is not the quality of what we did. Let's say we took an art class and I'm terrible at drawing things. So I'm not going to ever do that again. We don't focus on the quality of, of how we did the thing, but rather we turn our awareness inwards to see how did it make us feel. And what we want to follow is that feeling of aliveness, that feeling of curiosity, that feeling of, I want to learn more. Uh, because it's very easy, again, to get into like comparison. Maybe we're comparing ourselves to someone else in the class or the the environment and this new activity that we're doing. And we're like, mm, it, I'm not measuring up to them. But that's not the point is, again, these activities and these actions, uh, especially in this person's situation where she's checked off a lot of the boxes, has a lot of free time. She feels good about herself, but it's what she's looking for is to know the deeper parts of her. And so doing these new actions while re shifting your awareness into like paying attention to what gives you that spark is that's a thing. And just go out and try anything and everything and suspend doubts and uh, just use this as an opportunity to like date yourself almost and like get to know yourself in these new contexts and you'll discover uh, new passions, because uh, especially after uh, like something like a divorce is who you are inside of a relationship and who you are outside of a relationship. Like maybe you don't know yourself at all because you've done everything in the context of you always have to run things by your partner. But now that you don't is like maybe things that you assumed were your characteristics were actually theirs. And so it's a, a process of through these actions is getting to know yourself better. So obviously the, the, the canned answer from a monk would be to meditate more. And that's a given, <laughs> that's a given, but this is another uh, activity that you can do in a, a mentality to get to know yourself. Yeah. And for well, you, I'd Gil, like to... Oh, sorry. Go uh, for you, Gail, how would you guide this person? Yeah. Well, I was going to answer by saying that because, um, I think the thing is, we all, we're all looking for, oh, there's something missing. I'm not sure what it is. And I think once you find that light within yourself, you stop looking. 
But something it did for me was that I realized I had this light, this warmth, this energy within me now that I didn't have before. And I wanted to share it with other people. So I feel that my purpose, uh, you know, my son had left home. He's happy. He's got a job. He's got a nice career. He's he's gone. He's launched himself into uh, his own life successfully. And then suddenly I'm like, okay, well, I'm not a full-time mother anymore. His friends don't come around anymore. You know, there's this very quiet house and I've been successful at work. I've got some money behind me enough that I don't have to worry about money every day, but what, what, what now? And I think that also that may depleted my value a little bit, which is where I probably sank into the darkness as well, which is I was looking for a value. And my value, I realized, was in that when I found the light through you and you, both of your, your work, is that I suddenly thought, well, actually, my value is to share that with other people. So for me, what is my purpose is to share is to share that light. But it may be that, you know, she could start writing and that she can inspire people through her words. It might just be she can become a counselor or a mentor for younger people or for people, young people who don't have parents. There's so many directions that you can take yourself in, but I, as you become an empty nester or you become single again in later life. So like you said, it's trying all these different things. It's finding your inner child. What did I like doing when I was younger? I mean, who'd have thought from picking up a skipping rope, a jump rope right. a few years ago that my life would change in the way that it has. I mean, I've written a book, we've got a podcast. This is all from, I need to stop drinking. I need to start intermittent fasting and I need to move more. So I found my purpose through making changes, through transforming. So for any women who are listening to this, who find themselves with an empty nest, don't limit yourself on what other people think about you or what they may say about you. If you start a social media account, you start a podcast. Anyone can start a podcast. We've started a podcast. No. Anyone can start a podcast. So I just wouldn't limit myself. But yeah, start start within. As find your find your inner peace, find your light, and then share it with others. That's that's how I would have answered that one, and how I have a, how I have answered that. So, uh, we've got lots more questions there. I'm not sure we're going to have time for them all, you can but pick I'm your going to ask. Ones. Oh, let me have a quick look then. Um, let me see, yeah, and, and Charlotte. While you, it, oh, and on. while you're uh, finding the questions, uh, I'll add a little bit to that. Uh, the only thing I would add to that. Uh, answer from before is while you're taking time to explore these new activities, so while you're taking time to explore your tell yourself, take the pressure off because that's such a big one where, okay, now because of my friends or culture or society or the group that I'm around, I, I feel embarrassed and I need to find the answer now, but it's no, this is a new chapter in your life. And knowing yourself takes time, no need to rush and try these different things and uh, honor, honor that space and honor this time. And from that, doing it neutrally, from paying attention to what excites you, like what Venerable Michael talks about, it will start to reveal itself. But make sure we don't uh, rush the process too much or put too much pressure on ourselves. This is just the natural course and be so kind and content with yourself that, wow, I'm in this space of, let, let me get back to, to me. Yeah, I, I think with a lot of the questions that we've had, we've actually answered a lot of these as we've been going through, but I've picked one up from Juliet. And Juliet says, on the path to trying to find yourself, how do you navigate the big waves, the bad days? So you've set yourself on a path, but you're going to have a bad day. What would you say to somebody who wants to navigate the highs and the lows? Um. Yeah, that's a great question. And I feel like this one is so relatable for everyone and anyone who's on a transformation journey is like, there's ups and downs. And for anyone who thinks that meditation is just this progressive, this is what meditation progress looks like. And it's just this perfect line of ascending into enlightenment it's <laughs> i love the way you yeah. describe it you take away all of the seriousness of it but it's actually a serious what you're saying is serious but i love the fact that you add some humor and just make, you make it more human yeah and i mean i i think because people can often romanticize the spiritual path and the reality is it's hard <laughs> it's hard and there's a lot of ups and downs and to stay 
consistent is is one of the most difficult things. And there will be highs and there will be lows. But the thing that uh, meditation is really good at doing is to help us level out those highs and lows so that we're not too attached when things are really good and we're not too attached when things are really low. And so, uh, of course, meditation can help us level out those peaks and valleys. But I would say the first thing to note is that it's normal, that everyone, anyone and everyone goes through them and that it's part of the process because life is so multifaceted and there's so many factors that lead to, uh, like that we need to adapt to, that we need to adjust to. And when we're on this path of transformation, there's new factors that come, pop in and out of our life all the time. Whether there's a, a tragedy or a health issue or a, a this or a that. And even just the nature of transformation itself is that you're going to kind of have this moment where the momentum is on your side. You're feeling really good. You're hitting all of your habits. You're meditating every day. You're getting up on time. You're doing all the right things and your energy is going up and then it can taper off and you feel like a like an energetic slump where mm-hmm. the motivation tapers a little bit. And this is normal. It's natural. And I think uh, not attaching to this concept that it's always just going to be a steady climb and knowing that the slump will come and be prepared for it. And this is something that has helped me so much uh, is have different ways in which you can come back into balance. And I think the first thing is just allow yourself a little bit of rest because you've been building up so much momentum and doing so good is like, you don't need to drive yourself like into a wall is allow yourself to ease off the gas a little bit and schedule in some healthy ways of resting. What does healthy rest look like for you? It's not just sitting on a couch, eating it with a tub of ice cream and watching Netflix all day, but maybe it's something that you can like tone, take off the gas of, of self-development so much and, and like allow yourself a bit more of an ease filled day. Uh, another thing I've found super helpful is to uh, clean. And so many people look at cleaning and organizing as like a chore But if you can, in the monastery, they teach us that our external world and our internal world are, they mirror each other. And our mind is not a tangible thing that we can hold in our hand. So it must manifest itself in the way that we keep our physical environment, the environments that we spend the most time in. So if you're feeling off, if you're feeling like down, uh, clean your room, clean your bathroom, clean your closet. Uh, declutter stuff. And as you're doing it, don't look at it as a chore. Look at it as you are cleaning, decluttering, and organizing your mind. And it's not about like, I need to do everything perfectly. Is like, take your time with it and really like recognize that you're taking tangible steps towards uh, releasing heaviness, letting go of the clutter of the mind and coming back into balance. And uh, f- for me, I have a couple of more things that I filter through, uh, but just out of interest of time, I won't get into those things, but just come up with a list and write it down and experiment with yourself. What are those like kind of self-care techniques that when you feel in that energetic slump, how can you give yourself that uh, moment to reset and to reflect and then uh, reapproach your your path in a more grounded, rested way. So the ups and downs are totally normal. They will happen. Just create a plan to make sure that the the valleys following the peaks are not so long, and we don't like beat ourselves up so much. Yeah, I'll second that. Where the peaks and valleys, it's just part of the journey. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that can be helpful is have a support system. Someone who, when you have a down day, is I just need a friend who is healthy 
<laughs> who can hold space for you that I can I just need a vent. <laughs> Today is a difficult day. I'm not feeling motivated. I'm feeling down. I'm feeling stressed. This is what's coming up for you, uh, for me. But uh, this is what's going on. And they can hold that space for you. If you don't have a friend, then journaling. But mm -hmm. find ways where you can start to release or with exercise. Um, but find ways that is safe, that is healthy, where you can uh, process that emotion. And then I think the second part for me is re- mind yourself of impermanence and that this cannot last forever today is just a bad day and this too shall pass and i yeah. remember some days i'm like oh my goodness how am i I'm, I'm feeling so down again today i don't feel the progress i don't feel the change and i just had to recognize that again this is one of those days call it out it's a rough day and let's go through it take a breath this too shall pass. I go to bed <laughs> and then I know tomorrow will be a new day. But that's something that has been uh, helpful for my own uh, personal journey. I think the thing is, there's a difference between motivation and dedication. So motivation is the willingness to get started, but dedication mm -hmm. is the commitment to keep going. And even for myself with something as simple as jump rope is you know, I've got to, I've got to put this sports bra on. I've got to get, you know, I've got to go and put the air conditioning on. I've got to find some music. I've got to put my timer on and, and I, oh, maybe, I, maybe I won't do it today. And, you know, there are days when I actually talk myself out of it and then I regret it later on in the day. So if there are days when I don't want to jump, I will say to myself, why did you start jumping? What is it you want to achieve? Well, I started jumping because I wanted to keep my mobility and my cognitive function. And I don't want to become a burden to my husband or son if I can help it. I mean, obviously I could get hit by a bus and that's out of my control. But if I let my health go, then that is within my control. So on days where I'm lacking motivation, I go back to, well, okay, why did I start this? What is my long-term goal? And I think when you remember the long-term goal, you can kind of go, okay, yeah, I do need to jump. It's only 15 minutes. Come on, you can do it. And it's kind of having a word with myself. So if I don't if people don't have a friend, it's kind of saying, talking back to yourself and saying, why did you start? Why did you start if you're not going to finish? What was it that motivated you in the first place? And then you can get back on track. So that's kind of my simple answer is it's motivation. You can have it in the beginning and you can be like you're on fire. And then gradually that fire kind of slows down and slows down. And it's kind of keeping that fire going, which is remember the end goal that that that's how I would do it. But we've got time, I think, for one last question. Awesome. So I'm going to ask this one. Right. This is from Beck. She said, "How do you balance being content in the now while also pursuing your highest self?" Because that must be exasperating. Because you know where you want to get, but you can't get there quick enough because you need to put in the time. Yeah, I I love this question. Uh, Beck is our uh, someone that he he came to. Uh, the meditation retreat in Chiang Mai. And then oh, uh, so actually, you know Beck. Yeah, we we saw him out in uh California. So we hope to see you again, Beck, uh next time that we come out to California. Um, but yeah, I love this question because it seems like the the two things are almost at odds. It's like we're striving to be better, and yet like how can are we storing happiness at the achievement of that better? Uh and I think there's a cliche somewhere in here about enjoying, it's about the journey, not the destination. <laughs> and I think it's a cliche for a reason because of how true it actually is. And I think the approach that I use uh, to cultivate contentment is recognizing the function of a goal, recognizing the function of what we're aiming at is to get us up and moving every single day towards a valued end. It's not about the achievement of the goal itself that is important. And I think so many people store happiness in the end, the, the, the finish line. And then when they get there, the expectation is that's when the dump of positive emotion and fulfillment is supposed to be there. But if we don't fall in love with the process of becoming the person who can achieve that goal. Like that's mm -hmm. really what it's about is who do you become in the process of moving towards what you're aiming at? And knowing that every day you're working towards that, that is 
the the beauty of it. And another thing that really helps me a lot is in this moment, if I believe in transformation, if I believe in meditation, if I believe in this purification of this lens through which I view the world and myself, if I'm doing it right, by the time I get to my goal, I will have been able to see things more clearly and my goal will likely have shifted or expanded or I, I have a better awareness of myself in the situation and therefore I pivot. And this has happened so many times in our journey, especially as we go on this spiritual path, is we set a goal, but we're able to re- let go of it so fast because we're not attached to the outcome, but we know that in this moment, I make my best guess of what is my highest self and what goals are in alignment with that. And I hold very loosely to those goals because I know in the process of reaching them, I'm going to gain such a deeper self-awareness of myself, of people around me, of the situation at large. And therefore, I want a detachment, a healthy amount of detachment from my goals so that I can pivot in a wise manner as opposed to tunnel vision and losing sight of what's important because I'm so focused on achievement of that, crossing that finish line. And we're constantly storing happiness over the next achievement or accolade to attain versus is how can we really fall in love with the process of becoming that best version of ourselves. So that is my take on the cliche of uh, really enjoying the journey as opposed to focusing so much on the destination. Yeah, I really answer. like that. I yeah. really like that. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a beautiful answer. And for me, uh, what I can add is have big goals, n- no, no problem, but also take time each day to review the good that you have already done what you have been able to accomplish. And for us, we have big goals for what we're trying to do. And what I appreciate so much, like just for this podcast is when you were sharing Gail earlier of like uh, how we did the lighthouse retreat. I forgot we even did that. (laughs) Did you? (laughs) It's amazing. (laughs) Yeah, but because again, we think so much of the future, but for this time is to hear how you said the videos were helpful for you on your journey. Like that gave that gave me an opportunity to connect up. Oh, wow. We made these videos so people can use it or uh, all the great things that you've been doing up to this point, all the changes that you've been doing, who you have been able to become, the values, the qualities, the characteristics that you've developed. Take time to review that. And that for me is a practice that you can start to integrate where it can balance of us not just living in the future where we're never content, but it's, oh, wow, look at what we've been able to accomplish. And for us, we have accomplished uh, the things on our path, but even seeing for you, the things that you accomplish with your jump rope and the community that you built and the videos that you made and the community, it's beautiful, but just every single day, big or small, let's say you just made, you made a change uh, process. You've been only doing this for three days, celebrate mm. three days. Yeah, Three days is fantastic. And keep coming back to this, but with meditation, with anything that we're doing, all of this is a practice. All of this is a skill that now as we're uh, continuing, get this foundation very solid, get it very strong because we'll keep coming back to these basics. Yeah. I think the only thing I'd add to that is that I'm somebody in the past who would chase the next shiny thing. Mm -hmm. And it's always all the next shiny thing. I'll chase after that, chase after that. But then through the process of listening to your videos and and the teachings, I've realized that I'm the shiny thing. I'm the shiny thing and that I can shine brighter when I have this knowledge and this peace within me. And I'm kind of annoyed at myself in a way. I'm pleased with myself, but annoyed with myself. It took me 57 years (laughs) to experience bliss. 
absolute wow. bliss of I'm not stressed about anything. I feel good about everything. I feel in control of everything because I've let go, but I feel in control of everything. So I realized that instead of chasing a shiny thing, I am the shiny thing. Mm. And that I I need to, I need to shine, and that's a really it's a really simple thing to say, but it's really quite powerful in that we're always looking for something, but actually the last place we look is within ourselves. But that's where it is. So I thank you for everything you've. I, honestly, I don't think people realize how much effort it is to make a video and get the sound right and get the lighting <laughs> right and get the content right and and edit it and post it. So when I see your videos, I know how much work went into them, but you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for others. Right. I, I really want people to realize how much effort went into that. So I'm going to thank you on their behalf for the videos that you've made. Oh, thank you but so I know you've got some homework for us then, we Michael. We sure do. You've got some we, homework. <laughs> we got some homework. You weren't going to get away. Everyone thought, oh, it's going to end Ooh. and we don't have to do something, <laughs> but not true. So uh, we're going to have some homework for you all. I know we just talked about a lot of different things. So I think this segment is always going to be uh, helpful to give us some practical steps moving forward so that we know very clearly uh, how we can integrate what we've learned in each episode. And then we'll reconvene next month to talk about it. So really, as we have reiterated multiple times throughout this episode, is the first step to transformation is to see things clearly to see things neutrally. And so now we know how meditation helps us build this skill of neutral observation, which leads to clear comprehension. And so, uh, of course, on top of continuing to meditate, it wasn't just a 30-day challenge. We're doing a <laughs> lifelong challenge, 30 days at a time. No, one day at a time. We'll take it one day at a time. So we'll keep that uh, meditation habit going. Uh, and on top of that, I would like to invite you all to just start to neutrally observe your thoughts, speech, and action for this next month. Uh, if you want to get a, a journal, like a physical one, and uh, if you like the physical things to write it down. Uh, for me personally, I'm not much of a physical person. I like the electronic version. So it, if you want to put notes on your phone, uh, that way you don't have to carry things. And it's also more private uh, if you want to record your observations or if you just want to make a mental note. If all of that is just too much, you can make mental notes as well. But just for this next month, put yourself under a microscope and shift your attention from what's going on so much in the outside world to back to me. What comes up for me throughout my day? Uh, what are the things that I... Uh, the emotions that arise, the the thoughts that arise, the speech that I engage in. Uh, is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? My actions, my habits, my routines. And again, you'll probably notice that there, when there's this uh, unhealthy patterns that we recognize is there might be this self-criticism that arises. But in that moment, just like in meditation, uh, through this relaxing of that negative response. We just take a little breath, little smile, maybe close your eyes for a second or two and just reconnect with that comfortable feeling and just take note of it and reframe again as that mental rep. Here's a opportunity to cultivate more self-awareness, to see things more clearly so that we can release what no longer serves us. But before we release what no longer serves us, we have to see it clearly. So in this next month, just take note of all the healthy things, of all the unhealthy things, thought, speech, and action, and uh, just collect data, basically, about yourself. And let's do a very neutral assessment of our life in this moment. And this will keep, this will give us like the raw material, uh, the data that we can then uh Next month, when we talk about um, letting go, is we can be prepared uh, to to know what things we want to release. Yeah, can I add one more thing to that? Is also when we're doing this homework assignment, is make it like a video game and catch yourself. And when you catch these habits, celebrate it. Oh, there it is again. I see it and I caught it and write it down. And what we're training you is with observation neutral observation and keep 
catching. The more you can catch, make this an exciting journey of getting to know yourself, uh, diagnosing yourself very clearly, and we'll take it step by step, but make this fun. Right. So we don't have to rush into trying to change everything. That's the second step where we're just seeing it clearly. If you get inspirations and things like that, just write, write down all your ideas. And again, this make this fun. We don't want to make this heavy. Uh, so this homework should be a fun uh, self-exploration. So um, for me, this was super transformational when I first started doing it. And I think coupling it with meditation, wow, so powerful. So hopefully you all enjoy. Yeah, one of the things that I know that I have been doing this over my own journey of transformation is catching myself with negative speak. Mm. And that when I've caught myself doing it, and I still do it now sometimes, maybe I'm criticizing something or someone, and I will just stop myself and say, no, stop being negative. So I know that I'm going to be writing those in my book this month, (laughs) but I try not to be negative, but it's something I've been working on for a long time is if I hear something negative or if I am about to speak something negative, I will stop myself. So we'll look out for those in my journal at the end of this month. But um, yes, our topic for next month is minimalism, letting go and a simpler life. And we've got lots to talk about on that episode. Uh, If you're not subscribed already to Ben Nick's channel, then definitely do that or subscribe to mine as well if you like and follow us on social media. But also don't forget to comment on our videos because we will reply. And also we want to build a community and that's been really, really fun seeing the comments and people actually responding to each other's comments as well. Keep them positive. We like those. The negative ones get evaporated. So don't worry too much about those. But yeah, <laughs> keep commenting. They mysteriously disappear. <laughs> they mysteriously disappear. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, keep it positive. And yeah, keep commenting because it's really, really nice. It's nice to see the crossover between our channels as well, because obviously my channel is built up over a period of time and so has yours, but it's nice to see people coming across from different channels. That's been really, really nice. But I think it's time for us to sign off. We've been a bit longer today. We're for <laughs> over two hours. Wow. <laughs> I know. We we thought it might be shorter this time, but we were wrong. <laughs> we were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been two hours. So thank you to everybody for joining us. And I will hand over to you, Ben Michael, for our sign off. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. So until we meet again, may you be happy, healthy, wealthy, and well-balanced in every area of your life. And may your mind be pure and bright. And may that inner radiance shine outwards to make the world around you a brighter place. 